Blockchain and crypto developers and architects are getting pretty high salary these days. Average salary is over $150,000 per year and some jobs is paying quarter million to half a million dollar because there is a global shortage of blockchain and crypto talent. As you could see in the top two United States and India, the number of blockchain crypto professionals are quite low. But what does blockchain and crypto development actually means? And is your existing cloud DevOps skill of no use in this new world of blockchain and crypto? That's what we are going to find out in this video. We are going to learn the fundamentals of blockchain crypto, such as blockchain, mining, gas fee, and smart contract in easy to understand way. And then we are going to go over the tech stack for blockchain crypto and also discuss is your existing cloud DevOps skill of no use in this brave new world or is there a way for you to take advantage of your existing skills? This is a packed video, so timestamps are included for your viewing convenience. Let's get started. Let's start with blockchain. As the name suggests, a blockchain is a collection of blocks that stores information electronically in a digital format. Each block has three main fields. The address of the block, determined by the hash of that block, the data field, which stores information, and a reference to the previous block using previous hash field. The genesis block is the first block in any blockchain, and since it's the first block, the previous hash field is all zeros. And you cannot use this block in your application, so let's move forward with a real world use case. Let's say Bob sends Tina one Bitcoin. So another block will be added and the previous hash for this block will point to the block prior to that. And then the data field will reflect that Bob sent Tina one Bitcoin. And finally, this block will have its own unique hash number. This hash is derived based on data and a couple of other factors. So once this hash number is set for this block, and then if anything changes in the block, data, previous hash, or any other fields, the hash will change. One thing to note is each hash should have a predefined format. For example, for this blockchain, each hash must start with 007. And in reality, each block just does not have one transaction info. So one block will have multiple transaction info in it. Again, as an example, you could see the previous hash for this block is referring to the previous block and also this block has its own unique hash, but the hash also starts with 007. Now the question is, who adds this block? The coin miners add this block. So let's say Ravi wants to send Kim one Bitcoin and this transaction will be broadcasted to all interested miners. And all these miners will try to add the block first. Because remember, adding a block is just not about transaction. They need to derive the hash based on data and couple of other factors. This requires some retries. And whichever miner derives the next block fastest and correctly gets to add the block to the blockchain. But why? Why do they want to add the block first? Because whichever miner adds the block first gets a reward using some cryptocurrency. And this reward is provided by the person who initiated the transaction. And this reward is also called gas fee. Because it takes some time to mine the next block, that's why the transaction using Bitcoin or Ethereum is not as fast as using our traditional banking transactions. So let's say we have our three competing miners and now we have three transactions that want to be added to the next block. Also note that the actual transaction only completes when they get added to the block. So let's say Ravi wants to send one Bitcoin to Kim unless that information is added to the block, the balance is not going to transfer from Ravi to Kim. But coming back to this three transaction, the first two transactions, the sender, so Ravi and Bob, is saying they are willing to pay some sort of gas fee. 
So 0.1 BTC for the first transaction and Bob is paying 0.5 BTC for the second transaction. The third transaction, Tom to Jerry, Tom does not want to pay any gas fee. And chances are, since Tom is paying no gas fee, this transaction will never be added to the block. All right, so in this case, another miner win it and the transaction for Ravi to Kim and Bob to Rob gets added to the next block. However, Tom to Jerry did not get picked up. But how does it stop hacking? Now let's say a hacker comes in named Jim and tries to change the data of the second block from Bob to Tina to Bob to himself, Jim, one Bitcoin. But remember, the hash is also dependent on the data. As soon as the data gets changed, the hash gets changed and this block gets invalidated. As soon as this block gets invalidated, all the next blocks gets invalidated as well. So the only way Jim can get this transaction done is he has to derive the hash for this block and all the subsequent blocks. So you might be thinking, why the subsequent blocks? Why can't Jim just change the hash of this block to start with 007 and change the previous hash for the next block? But remember, anytime anything is changed in the block, the hash for that block will change. That's why Jim needs to mine the next blocks as well. And since blockchain is a decentralized platform, Jim is not going to have all the CPU and mining power to change all the blocks. And using a democratized voting system, the blockchain will be restored to the previous state. So in summary, blockchain is a database that stores information. It is immutable because once a block is written, you cannot change it. It is openly available. Anyone can go and read the blockchain and even copy the entire blockchain into their own computer. And each cryptocurrency has separate blockchain. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, they all have their separate blockchain. If another crypto is reusing a blockchain, we call it a token and not a cryptocurrency. And because of the nature of the mining and how the data is stored, Blockchain is slower than traditional databases. Now let's understand smart contracts. Smart contracts are simply programs stored on blockchain that run when predetermined conditions are met. So let's say Teddy, a budding NFT artist, created this viral NFT artwork. And Dave is an art collector who has a lot of money who wants to buy this NFT using Ethereum. So the smart contract will dictate whether the transaction is done or not. So let's say that Teddy set the price to 20 Ethereum and Dave sends 19 Ethereum. This smart contract program will check, hey, Dave sent less than the price and tells Dave the price is 20 Ethereum. So Dave sends 20 Ethereum this time. Nice try, Dave. And then this contract holds this 20 Ethereum and then transfer the NFT to Dave and then transfer the 20 Ethereum to Terry. Hence, the transaction completes. And since anyone should be able to utilize and execute these smart contracts, smart contracts live on blockchain. Some of the other smart contract examples are literally every NFT marketplace, any store or websites accepting cryptocurrency, Crypto swap, for example, Bitcoin to US dollar or Bitcoin to Ethereum and more. As you could tell, any crypto blockchain NFT application needs to use smart contract. Now that we understand the fundamentals, let's go over the blockchain crypto tech stack and find out whether our existing cloud DevOps knowledge is of any use or they are all a waste. The heart of any blockchain crypto tech stack is the blockchain itself. Each cryptocurrency has separate blockchain. Ethereum blockchain is the most popular and that's what I'll recommend you to learn. And every blockchain crypto application will have a traditional front end and back end. So the front end you can write with React, back end you can write with Node.js, Python. These are just examples. You can write the front end and back end in, in any programming language that you know. The core of the application will be the smart contract, 
which will be executing the programs on the blockchain, smart contract can be written using Solidity, and Solidity can be used in Ethereum, Polygon, and Binance blockchain. Alternatively, you can also use Rust, C, C++ to write smart contracts for Solana blockchain. Solana is an up and coming blockchain. Solidity is kind of similar to Node.js and Python. So if you know either of this language, it should be easy for you to pick up. And both the front end and back end will interact with smart contract using API. You can code API using Web3 API or Ethers. And in this diagram, whichever tech I'm putting in the color green is the recommended one for you to learn because that is the most popular right now. Fetching data from blockchain could be slow. So to use some sort of query and make it a little faster, you use GraphQL to fetch the data. And for local development of smart contract and testing, you can use Hardhat for JavaScript or Brownie for Python. Now remember the NFT that Teddy was trying to sell? At the end of the day, they are images and images could be large. So you don't want to save all those images in the blockchain itself. So for that, you utilize a storage that interacts with the blockchain. The most popular storage right now is IPFS. Now, how does Cloud DevOps come into play with this? So for blockchain, you can use Amazon managed blockchain. All the cryptocurrency blockchains are open to anyone. But if you want to create a blockchain, which is private and only predetermined parties can interact with that, you can use Amazon managed blockchain. In addition, you can also join any public blockchain network using Amazon managed blockchain. And remember the front end back end at the end of the day is running some sort of code. And the most popular option to run code right now is Kubernetes using Docker container. But alternatively, you can run them in Amazon EC2, Lambda, etc. Generally, the back end will save some data. So in that case, you can use Amazon DynamoDB or even other traditional databases. So all your knowledge of DevOps, security, cost optimization, and other cloud DevOps concepts that you know, you can put all of them to use in blockchain crypto application. So do I recommend for you to learn blockchain and crypto? So it depends on you. If you are someone who are trying to get into cloud and DevOps, then I would say no, focus on learning the cloud DevOps because there are way more jobs in cloud DevOps. If you are already in cloud DevOps and getting a little bored, then please look into blockchain and crypto. As I went over, if you know blockchain crypto along with your cloud DevOps knowledge, you can get paid a pretty high salary. Personally, I am learning this on the side and I am having a lot of fun. So expect some more videos along with hands-on for crypto and blockchain. All right, folks, hopefully this was helpful. If this was, please click that like button and subscribe. Each like helps this video reach new viewer and help this channel grow. All right, folks, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video.